Denver 20. Different look on defense, just three down linemen. Josh McDaniel said once they get inside the 20, we're going to flip a switch. It's going to be different. That's a die shaking off a big loss. Would have been up front. Denver, very active. They're athletic. Jamal Williams being inside, that really helped. Well, that first half, the Broncos made a couple of mistakes, and that's been the difference. Two. Last week, what was it last no, week? It was you last week. No, yeah, two timeouts, 110 on the clock. Trying to put up something before the half. Lynch. Little night vision for you here. I kind of like this thing. Gives you a chance to look at OCU Manura and the pressure he's been getting. Maybe we should call this thing good night vision because for Jay Cutler, that's what it's been feeling like. And then our Golf Channel aim point presented by Fidelity here, Gary. Yeah, and we, we watch uh, Schwartzel's birdie putt steeply up the hill out of a low area. And as you can see, uh, quite a bit of break from left to right. Yeah, you know what, from that distance, you're happy. Nice little tap in par. The longest par three on the course. At two under. The three, but the soul from Odom. And the crowd on his feet as the Lakers now are up by three with some spectacular play at both ends of the floor. Well, really, the Lakers' side now is starting to show through. Lamar Odom and Al Gasol making themselves very large on the offensive glass is probably the most surprising statistical aspect of this game so far. We see the five on the floor for North Carolina. North Carolina. Well, a better job by Ryan Kelly defending in the low block, not going for the pump fake and keeping his body similar. Ready the curl, trying to get free. The one yard line. Vic out of the gun. Now Selleck sets up for protection in the backfield. Send him into the pattern and Vic Follows him into the end zone. Slam dunk. He comes in the game, got a big interception late against Hasselback. Second and goal. Wayne, the lone receiver to the left. Bailey matched up on him. Takes the run, across the middle, touchdown off to Ali. Well, that was well fought out. They had the extra defender there to double team the inside. Not a little bit as the sun's come out, Dave. Well, yes and no, DJ. I kind of listened to him on the radio, and you got the feeling that they weren't sure they really did want to pit. The car was a little bit loose, but it wasn't way out of control. So once they hit pit road, they took their four tires, made an air pressure adjustment, and Jamie's been fighting his way back. He did just radio in. It's a lot better. At the Indy 500, drivers put complete trust in their cars. But when you're out on the road trying to make it to work, are you sure you can trust your motor oil? Put your trust in Peak Performance Motor Oil. Formulated to protect against thermal breakdown, Peak is the only motor oil tough enough to be the official oil of the Indianapolis 500. Whether you cover 500 miles in a few hours or it takes hours to get to work, you can count on Peak. When you peak, you win. All right, Alan, I've moved over to the launch pad. And, Al, as we know, we've revealed the first 18 players in our list of the top 100 right now. A couple of DHs at 83 and 84. And before we talk about Vlad Guerrero's 2010, let's talk about the career. Amazingly consistent over 15 seasons. A career 320 hitter. Slugs better than 550. Creeping up on 500 home runs. Going to take him a little while longer to get there, quite possibly two, three years. How about last year now? This is a guy already with 15 years in the big leagues. And, again, right in line with the career numbers out. Future Hall of Famer Vlad Guerrero is a bad ball hitter. This guy is devastating in any lineup. It's been a health issue the last few years. He plays all out every time he's on the field. A special hitter. But I, I want to go into when you face a guy like Vladimir Guerrero, you hear about bad ball hitters. Well, he is the ultimate, I think, all-time bad ball hitter. This would be typical in an expansion of a strike zone for most Major League hitters. But in my opinion, Vladimir Guerrero, none of these pitches, <laughs> Matt, on. are safe. This is an area in which that he could cover. He's like a cricket player. You watch this ball that 
that Armando Reynoso throws down and away, and he ends up still getting it. Even though his front side fly, his hands are back, and is able to throw a little base hit to left field. This guy's got power to all fields and certainly has shown it average-wise and home run-wise. But watch here. You look at the strike zone. This ball looks like it's down and away, right? Okay, he's able to keep the hands back. Base hit. Well, let's take a look at this. Hold on there. Stop right there. Wait a minute. That bounced. It was 58 <laughs> feet. Classic Vladimir Guerrero bad ball hitter. Andy Pettit, he wants his ball on the outside part of the plate. Look where this is. This is about a foot away from the strike zone and almost on the ground. Watch how he stays on this ball, head down, keeps his hands back, and drives the ball to right center field. Special hitter. You Vlad Guerrero, terrific still with 15 years. In Had the green and gold going yesterday, and today it was victory red for Mark Wilson. Charlie Reimer with us in the IBM Inside Center. We talked about the fact that he hits a lot of fairways, hits a lot of greens. The putting was good, but not spectacular. So show us how Wilson got it done, Charlie. Yeah, I want to draw a little bit of attention here to uh, this portion of the fourth round. This was late Sunday. This little section right here, 11 and 12 playing, is two of the most difficult holes on the golf course. Mark Wilson made bogey at the 11th, but he came right back and made a beautiful birdie at the 12th. His tee shot there at the 12th, probably the best shot that he played uh, for this entire event. Tommy Ganey threw that section of holes, went bogey, bogey, so Mark Wilson got two up as uh, daylight started to uh, creep in, and that allowed him to start the final round today at the 13th with uh, the whole golf tournament unfolding right in front of him with that two-stroke lead. I think that was a critical section for him. Want to have a look uh, at the stats as well. A little something that uh, really stands out right here. Greens in regulation. He was number one this week in greens in regulation. And uh, anytime you hit that many greens and give yourself that many opportunities, you know you're going to have a heck of a week. Daniel oh, Briere. Thank God. Goes thank by God. Danny Briere now, and for good reason. He is an awesomely talented player, terrific in the playoffs last year and a well-deserved guy to be there I'm glad that he's there uh, I thought he should have been there originally but the guy that was there originally from the Philadelphia Flyers another silky smooth look at I got Claude Giroux and Louis Eric every year it's a familiar refrain the NFL is a league of parody more so it seems than in other sports in pro football a team's fortunes can shift drastically from year to year after all the difference between 10 and 6 and 6 and 10 might be just a few plays in baseball the difference between 100 wins and 60 is something else again. This is a great play, one of the most incredible touchdowns I've seen. Uh, this is going to be a touchdown pass to Brent Selleck, and we'll take a look at it. We talked about in the pregame how they get everybody out, but Selleck is staying in to block on this play. He's blocking Manny Lawson. Takeo Spikes has him man-to-man, -man, and this looks like it should be a sack. Right here, Manny Lawson beats him on the block. If you told me Brent Selleck was going to catch a touchdown pass now, Rodney, I'd say you're crazy, but he leaks through the line, sees Cobb scrambling, and just tries to make something happen and Spikes loses it. And Takeo has to stick with his guy. He's right here, he's walking on, on the play, but he has to stay with his man. His man is wide open. That's why coaches like you always talk about finishing play. Finish the play. And and I think that Cobb did pretty well. He did, he had, he had a good first half until that last play. <laughs> Should have heard him yelling and screaming, <laughs> no! <laughs>
left-hand corner by passing on the right-hand side. <laughs>